guys, it's Alex. So, the day has arrived that I am going to take apart the OEM supercharger on the ZR1, the 2009 ZR1, uh, for the purposes of installing the ported supercharger that I received from Greg Kong, Greg Kayasayan up in Pennsylvania. He sent me a ported uh, 2.3 liter supercharger. I'm not going to install a 2.6 on this vehicle. I think uh, 2.3 liters ported is more than enough for what I need on this on this particular vehicle unless I decide to really really get after it. 1000 horsepower does not sound fun to me. 800 does. So that's the plan to to shoot for about high 700s, low 800s. Should make it a nine second car in the quarter mile. Should make it a four second car or low five second car. 60 to 130 with race gas. So the way it sits right now is stock cold air, FIC 1440 injectors, stock blower with upgraded intercooler bricks on the lid. It has a 2.6 grip tech pulley and American Racing inch and seven eighths long tubes free flowing to a Borla exhaust. That's it. Basically long tubes and boost and a tune, right? That's it. So and it made 600 horsepower to the rear wheels on that setup. So the goal is to be couple hundred horse above that with race gas and more boost. The new setup is going to be a Kong ported blower, 2.3 pulley, ported snout, and an aftermarket cold air that Kong sent me a, what do you call it, a uh, tracking number for. So that's when I said, okay, there's a tracking number. That means it'll be here around Tuesday. So today is Saturday. Let me start tearing apart the blower so that I can basically make a comparison video. So this video will be mostly a comparison video showing you the differences between the export and a bone stock unported blower. Then I'll install it and uh, another time we'll go ahead and dial it in because it's going to take me a little bit to dial it in. You know, this is a new platform to me. So I have tuners that are willing to work with me and help me. People like Tom, people like um, Alec, people like Greg. So I think I'm in good hands when it comes to that. So. Let's start tearing it apart. I'm not gonna show you too much of that. You know the process. And we can then show you the differences between a Kong ported blower versus a bone stock LS9 supercharger. I'm doing this more so that I can remember where this goes. So this line that goes right here goes way the hell in down there. And I'm doing this so that I don't forget it, basically, okay? to find out. Yes, sir. I almost look like I know what I'm doing. So one thing that definitely has to be addressed on this car, um, similar to Mustangs, this thing needs a catch can to make sure that any of the oil that is in the crankcase uh, being sucked in by the uh, crankcase ventilation or crankcase depressurization uh, system that is stock is remedied because this thing definitely has some oil um, buildup in similar areas that, let's say, Mustangs would, uh, especially on the intake. So you got to be uh, cognizant of that because even if you're running E85, you know, if you have oil where your combustion is happening, meaning the runners, um, eventually you're going to negate the octane that you're getting from either race gas or ethanol by introducing oil in there. So a catch can is absolutely gonna get installed in this guy once I get it all figured out.
Well, all the bolts are out. Oh, sorry, they're not out. One is still in there. And uh, gotta be real careful taking that sucker out. Because if you drop it in the head, well, this will become a uh, motor swap. And we don't want to do motor swap on this channel. And if I do swap it, it'll be coyote swap. <laughs> yeah, nothing's hitting. Harness, injector, all right. Okay. Bucket, one, two, three, let's go. Oh yeah, you know, make fun of my gym shit all you want. <laughs> Paul's a weak bitch. That could not have happened that quickly. The Lingenfelter snout is a little bit of a different design. As you can see, the Lingenfelter snout comes out more of in a straight angle. Whereas the stock snout kind of has an upward tilt to it. This is, again, this is a 2009. I'm not sure if anything changed um, with this stuff um, year to year, like 09 to 12 or 13, whatever year they uh, stopped making these guys. But from what you can tell, obviously, a quick visual reference from the front, it's definitely noticeable in terms of the inlet size. As you saw in the previous video, this guy has been ported. The runners have been ported. Now there's debate whether porting the runners does anything, but I like the fact that he did it because the stock stuff obviously is pretty different. You can see there's just more meat in the shoulder area than here, which he kind of pocketed on the inside. I'll try to get a better shot of that. Let's say, I don't know what's on there. Let's say, say front passenger side. And this is the front passenger side on the other one. And this, is the, this is the microphone receiver, don't mind that. As you can tell, it's uh, pocketed pretty cut down to make it maybe a little less restrictive but again there's debate whether that's even worth it or not but the fact that he did it is something I like very much so he also epoxied this area this area has some kind of epoxy not really sure if that just smooths the airflow but it looks like it just might make the air I don't know oh that's the bypass so he might have his reasons for doing that but I'm not super familiar as to how the bypass is restricted or how you know it's affected what the hell happened here there we go <laughs> camera was wonky i don't know how the bypass is affected in that particular area but he would know that's what he does for a living so there are the differences the inlet is quite different and obviously i'll be running a different throttle body <clears throat> what i'll be running from stock and i don't know if this is a nick williams or what um it looks like it to me but I'm not really familiar with Nick Williams or stock stuff. Obviously this is a stock throttle body and this is what I'll be running. So let's get everything transferred over and get it on the car so that all I have to wait for is the cold air. Y'all know how that goes. Got that old man strength. And uh, boy, George, I think he's got it. And yes, before you ask, I am going to put Loctite on the threads. Okay, just before you ask, I am going to put Loctite on the threads. Let me start chasing them in there with a little needle nose. So I'm drop them, drop them. All the bolts are down. Get these caskets back in there. Bada bing, bada boom. 
excuse me, just getting over my cocaine habit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's put the lid on. Let's keep chugging, chugging, chugging to get to get stuff done. Yeah. Okay. Thing is tight I lock tighted the bolts actually before I do this I'm gonna run some vacuum lines because I had trouble with that last time so let me run some vacuum line before I cinch the lid down yeah that was very smart of me to run these lines before I put the lid on the lid on would have been a little more difficult so now I know based on experience that lid should always go last so move this connector out of the way make sure the gasket isn't compromised or lifted Nope. Anything weird? No, nope. gasket good. Okay guys, and just like that, we are all set. Got the blower cinched up, everything's nice in there. Got the lines, I'm gonna get it cleaned up, but I'm not gonna put the throttle body on until the cold air shows up. So we're gonna go ahead and end the video there. But what I wanted to do mostly was just give you guys a comparison of you know what is going on here when it comes to uh, the porting. Uh, Greg Kong has been awesome to work with. I'm really happy that he's hopped on to uh, support uh, as a sponsor and as a parts provider because part of the reason that I got uh, this particular vehicle was to hopefully get um, prominent people in the industry that are familiar with this platform on board and uh, we can do some testing and bring you guys different content from different platforms. We got the Mustang stuff covered. I still have the GT500 to do. One day I'll get another S197 GT to get back at it like I used to because I think that requires some revisiting because people are starting to forget that one of the better platforms out there for drag racing specifically is the 11 to 14 Mustang. But for now, I'm gonna uh, say goodbye and hopefully by the time that you see me again, we'll have the throttle body and the cold air installed and tuned at least base stuff so that we can go ahead and do some watt pulls on the dyno and see what power difference this ported Kong blower makes. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.